Rock 102.1 KFMA, Oro Valley, Tucson, an Arizona Lotus Corp radio station. Do you even smart speaker, bro? Listen on your Amazon Echo device. Alexa, play Rock 102.1 KFMA. You say it, I'll play it. You want it? You got it. Reality Radio done right. right. No nonsense, real and raw, just like you like it. He's corrupt, he's inexperienced, and he lies. Broadcasting from a broom closet in the Arizona Lotus Studios, it's Beef Vegan Presents. Yo, welcome back to the show. It's BBK Presents Live on Rock 12.1 KFMA, streaming worldwide at KFMA.com. Don't touch that camera there, Todd. I like touchy things. Uh, and, uh, welcome to the show. It's Monday, uh, April 8th, a uh, day after uh, back-to-back WrestleManias. It's that post-WrestleMania depression. It's much like the post-Super Bowl depression. Yeah, uh, but, except for it was a whole weekend, so it's a major hangover. Yeah, yeah, and it's for virgins, but still... <laughs> uh, you know, it was a great weekend of watching wrestling and stuff uh, for those of you who are fans. And it looked like there was a lot of new fans this year as well. It was, it was pretty massive uh, with back to back sold out shows in Philadelphia. Uh, they braved the elements over 150,000 people mm-hmm. all together for the weekend. Uh, there was title changes galore and all the stuff that you would want as a wrestling fan. I was actually thoroughly impressed. They were calling it the Triple H era. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So this is the marks the first WrestleMania that Vince McMahon, who uh, you know, uh, gone, just yeah, gone. who grew that company to prominence in my entire lifetime. Actually, I was just looking from 1979, the year I was born, mm-hmm. uh, until 2023. He was uh, the head man in You've charge. Never of. known a WWE without Vince McMahon. Exactly. Uh, and so that my entire life, and then they turned the page, and this uh, all weekend, it was very interesting to see from like the Hall of Fame induction uh, and all the different speeches, uh, the amount of flowers that Triple H was receiving from his uh, talent and from the legends. I it pretty much every single time they're just like. Uh, I'm a Triple H guy, or I, it, or I, I'm so happy uh, with the direction that the company's going to right now under this man. Essentially, it, all I heard was "F Vince McMahon, F him in his effing face." All right, <laughs> like it was nonstop uh, of just like oh, that old guy. I don't even remember his name. This is the guy now. Yeah, this is great. That guy sucked. We're yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was like that. It was a celebration of you know old guard going away and uh, the new guard coming in and uh, leading the direction. So it was exciting. It was good to see. Uh, I won't give you any spoilers or any of that stuff. I'm sure you could see it online as well. You could watch it on Peacock. Yeah. And I know you didn't watch it either, uh, but there, there was a one point yesterday that, you know, I, I check Twitter periodically. Right. And I saw bisexual undertaker trending. And I'm, I'm like, sorry, what bisexual undertaker. Odd, right? I, uh, a, you have my attention. Go on. <laughs> exactly. And I'm just like, huh, bisexual undertaker. And uh, so I click on it and it, it was a bunch of tweets talking about a wrestler named Damian Priest, who uh, was able to cash in his money in the bank briefcase and become world heavyweight champion. Uh, Damian Priest is uh, in the Judgment Day, which is a faction. He is of Puerto Rican descent. He's a big dude, kind of like sounds like Scott Hall for all you wrestling fans out there, Razor Ramon. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But also he's kind of goth like <laughs> and he's very open in his sexuality. Uh, he's a good looking dude. Got machismo, got swagger. Apparently, you know, he likes to swing both ways. I don't care if he does or he doesn't. Uh, but the Internet. They're vicious, man. And so this guy wins a championship, the World Heavyweight Championship, for the very first time in his career. And uh, the way the, uh, yeah, the <laughs> IWC, the Internet Wrestling Community, celebrate this man is by immediately tweeting, yay for bisexual Undertaker. You're like, whoa, <laughs> why is Undertaker getting drug into this? <laughs> and this is just like, yeah, it's, it's an odd that's a choice. Yeah, I'm that's a choice. Okay. This man. That's a, a little rude, if you will. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't think he's branding that. I don't think he's going to put it on a T-shirt until he puts it on a T-shirt. Uh, I will not condone uh, bisexual Undertaker. But if he does put it on a T-shirt, I'll Game be on. like, yeah, that's pretty dope. Well, congratulations. Bye, Undy. Uh, is that, <laughs> that's 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 how the kids would say it, dude. <laughs> you got, you're slanging up, you know. 
All right. Well, oh my gosh. We can't yeah. wait for that app. That that ad of of buy undies. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be fantastic. Buy undies. I'm gonna whoop your butt. <laughs> WW. Yeah, <laughs> these are form fitting and uh, attractive to both sides uh, of the fence. Uh, as endorsed by Bisexual Undertaker. All right, so there's a, a couple of ticket opportunities that we're doing all week long. I'm excited about today's show. Nine o'clock hour, we're going to have comedian Steve Trevino on the podcast broadcast. He, of course, has a show coming up at the TCC, I believe on April 20th. Uh, or the 19th, yeah. It's coming up right around the corner. I'll give you the information there. Uh, and then the tickets that we're giving away this week is another comedy show that's going to be at the Linda Ronstadt Music Hall. That is the Bad Friends Tour uh, starring Andrew Santino and Bobby Lee. I'm trying to get Andrew on the show. Uh, we go way back, but mm -hmm. I'll be giving away tickets for that later on. Also, the Big right, Centurion. That's the show open. Let's get ready for our guests. Yeah, there's a lot of things happening and going on in town. Uh, and we got uh, Steve Trevino backstage. So uh, let me welcome him to everybody. Uh, good morning, Steve. Thank you for joining the podcast broadcast, dude. What's up, dudes? How are we? Good. Hello. hello. Yeah, I'll give you a full rundown. Okay, my name is B. Fegan, uh, and I'm not as stupid as I, my name would prelude to uh you, top, you just got that strip club dj voice i love it <laughs> yes. uh, we got valdez and manny all joining and uh all massive fans so thank you for uh, joining us we are this is a podcast broadcast right so we're like live streaming on a podcast but we're also going to be jumping back and forth on the fm side on rock one and 2.1 uh, so we'll do that kind of seamlessly but uh, i just give you a heads up because uh at some point if like Hopefully, I won't try to do this, but like mid sentence, I might have to interject just to kind of reset uh, to let people know what we're doing here. So, where are you at right now? I am in Denver, Colorado. Uh, nice. Did shows last night. Uh, woke up. I'm doing this, and then I have a <clears throat> TV interview somewhere here in Denver at at noon. So, uh, missing the eclipse back home in Texas completely, which I, I don't get it. it it's the whole thing. <laughs> You know, right, it goes dark for four minutes, and then yeah, I, I, you know, on. yeah, my wife's like, "Get gas! We need to get gas and <laughs> bottled waters." And I'm like, Noth "Nothing's happening." Right. It, it is a three minute deal, uh, but you are where you're from in Texas. It, it would be a total blackout, right? You're in that path. Yeah, I mean, my house is like supposedly like two minutes or whatever, because I'm kind of on the side but then my wife called me this morning she goes it's completely cloudy like we're not even going to see it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's a whole thing that doesn't need to be a thing that everybody turns into a thing now you know what i mean right like yeah <laughs> uh, i remember y2k do you guys remember y2k when that absolutely. Was absolutely oh my god we're gonna die don't go out <laughs> you know everything's gonna and it's like eh. Yeah, but New Year's '99. That was a great party. It was. Doesn't oh, matter yeah. where you were. I, I actually watched uh, Prince in Houston sing um, for New Year's Eve in '99. Really? Where was this at? I was in Houston. We went to the concert, and he sang uh, "I'm Gonna Party Like It's 1999." And it was freaking awesome. That was that was just been wild. That one, yeah, that event. absolutely. Uh, so uh, you're currently on tour, of course, uh, and you're promoting a new comedy special that you're going to drop on Netflix here soon, right? Uh, it already dropped. I mean, we uh, yeah, oh yeah, you know, we were at number we were at number two for for five days. Um, we couldn't beat the gentleman, but I guess who can? I mean, that shows you know huge. And then uh, we stood there at two, and then dropped to six, and then five, and then. Now I'm just in the uh, the algorithm. Now I'm just right. in the in the <laughs> Netflix pot of BS that they put out. I guess so, uh, but it's doing well. We're doing good. Yeah, you, you gotta love it. So you know, with that, you know, this is like your fifth comedy special that you've done. Yeah, I mean, you, you say know, six? Uh, this was the the I did four, and Netflix helped me do one. Uh, right. What I what I mean by that is that we self produced. We did our own thing. Uh, my wife and I, we, we paid for it all. Um, we, you know, we, we didn't wait, you know, I, I, I got to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to wait for somebody to give me a deal and wait for somebody to want to do a special with me. I just did it. Right. Yeah. And well, and I mean, I, when you first popped on my radar, uh, was with your self-produced comedy special relatable when you had yep. that rock and vest, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> who, 
who's this guy? And honestly, you know, oh, what a fantastic special from beginning to end. And, you know, spot on as far as the title, because you uh, you come off as a very relatable, every man we're talking about your relationship with your wife, your family, you know, um, <laughs> you're actually – Leading into this, I was listening to uh, your bit about gummies, right? And right. your father-in-law. And you happen to be doing a show on 420, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Are you going to bite the leg for 420 or no? I do. I bite the leg almost every night. I, 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 <laughs> Are you on that now? Are you on the gummy tip? Well, no, it helps me sleep, man. I use it to sleep. You know, I get nice and relaxed. I take a little something and, and just kind of melt into the bed. And I... because. Dude, I'm a busybody, man. My brain never stops. Right. So, yeah. you know, gummies for me have become a sleep thing, which also sucks because when my friends want to party in Vegas and they're like, have a bite. I'm like, no, I'll go to sleep. Like, <laughs> it's it's, it's not a party thing yourself. for me. It's a put me to sleep thing. Right. Yeah. Even if it was like a sativa bear. You know, do you know the Are you at the point now where you know the difference yeah, I, between the strains and all that? I don't get, I mean, I'm ADHD. So then they're like, well, you need the sativa. Uh, and then I'm and like, okay. Backwards. Yeah. yeah. It's all backwards. I don't know. I don't, I mean, all I know is I take it and I just want to crawl in my bed and pass out. <laughs> that's what, that's <laughs> what I know. That's yeah. exactly, you know, uh, I don't, I, I, I like it and it helps me sleep. Yeah. Well, now that you're you're in Denver right now, of course, and actually you know, the next couple states that you're kind of doing comedy runs on are all like kind of legalized states in a way. We're legalized too, or decriminalized. Yeah, it just um, cracks me up. You know, I'm in Texas, and they're like, "We're doing CBD now," and I'm like, "Can we stop with the? Let's just." Yeah, let's it's just, such a I mean, joke. Let's stop. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's a, that's you how know? they ease into it. I know. Yeah. I know. I, I, it is odd, though, too. It's like a pinky. You... It's like a pinky for the lady. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I'm coming in nice and slow. Nice yeah. and slow. Gotta get it's you easy. used to this. <laughs> yeah, like, see, it ain't that bad. And then... yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's, you're up to your elbow. All right. Yeah. So that means you, you got to get nervous then every time because you're traveling the country. And, of course, half the state is legalized, but you live in uh, Texas and they don't mess around. Uh, it's part of their slogan. So you get nervous bringing your gummies into town and because you still need to use them for sleep and whatnot. No, cause I'm a comedian and you know, I need the material. So it, it, it is, <laughs> you know, it's like nothing. Let happens. It come. I don't, I don't lose my job. Actually, my job gets better. If I have a story of me getting apprehended because I have 11 milligrams of weed you know, I mean, whoa, whoa slow down, buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, chill out, big guy. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you I, ever been arrested? I have, y yes. Um, yeah, in, in several different states, and and you know, <laughs> dude, I was doing so good. Try, you know, I'm a simple man raising kids. My kids are gonna Google Steve on podcast, and then my son's <laughs> gonna be like, Dad, you said you were arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't know yet they still don't know they don't know they don't but yeah i mean you know i i um i had my first year of getting in fights on the road and and you know a little public intoxication you know just you know like my dad calls it good old boy trouble i got in i got yeah. in good old boy trouble i i didn't get in uh steal a car trouble uh well if it's been several states that you had some good old boy good old boy trouble in, what was your favorite state to get arrested in and what was your least favorite state to get arrested in? I, I think well, um my I think my favorite state to get arrested in was Florida, uh, because I actually got away with um what happened was I came out of the bar, I peed by my car. Yeah. As I one got, would do. Yeah. Yeah. I got in the car and as soon as I left the parking lot, I got pulled over. And then the cop, when we went to court, goes, I saw him pee by the car. And then I guess in Florida, you can't, you can't like stake out a bar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Right. Like yeah, a cop. A cop can't, yeah. It's entrapment. So yeah. As soon as I remember that, like, as soon as he said that, the judge goes, <laughs> like, like letting the cop know, like you just lost. You have you screwed yourself, buddy. And yes. I'm like, later, losers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, and then, nice. and then, you know, a, a buddy of mine's a Navy SEAL. Um, I was partying with him and a bunch of Navy SEALs in uh, Virginia. Got arrested there, and then you know the SEALs were on their way to Afghanistan that night. 
So I went ahead and took all the the slack for it. And then oh, we're gonna get I, on the air. Let me get, like, yep. rock one two point one KFMA. Uh, it's Beefy and presents. Joining us on the podcast broadcast, we got comedian Steve Trevino, who's performing at the Linda Ronstadt Music Hall on uh, April twentieth. Uh, and I interrupted the story, so I, again, uh, continue, Steve. I'm sorry. Oh, we'll continue the story. So um, we ended up getting in a fight with some other guys. We get arrested. I take the heat for the seals because they were. I was like, guys, these are heroes. Let them go. I'm just yeah. a fat. I'm just a fat comedian. Like, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take the 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 stuff. So at about eight o'clock in the morning, this guy comes in, all white, all these medals on his chest, like Navy guy. They're pointing at me. I'm over there waving, like it's me, it's me. <laughs> they let me leave. I'm walking out with this Navy guy, and I stick my hand out and I go, "Thanks for getting me out." And he goes, "Stay away from my seals." And you're disgusting. And just walked off. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and that was it, dude. That was it. You um, were doing the honorable thing for taking the blame there, but then he put 100% of the blame on you. Like you're the bad influence on yeah. Navy SEALs. Yeah, on a bunch of Navy SEALs. I'm the problem. My family yeah, yeah. is the problem. <laughs> right. Um, and then we got, and then with the same SEALs, we got busted again in Richmond, Virginia. We were rappelling off my hotel. <laughs> and, okay. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God, I got to do that. So I'm doing it. <laughs> of course, boom, spotlight. I get to the bottom. You just see the rope come down, you know, and then the seals just disappear. And the, the cops the are like, that. <laughs> yeah, the cops are like, where are your friends? I'm like, they were here. <laughs> 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 They're not anymore. Um, that's amazing yeah. too because that's the benefit of being friends with Navy SEALs is they have rappel gear and you can literally set up a rappelling mission wherever they're at yeah my, my buddy goes hey man look out the window we're partying <laughs> in my hotel I look out the window and one of the SEALs is like hanging there looking at <laughs> <in> the window <laughs> and I'm like I gotta do that how do I do that let's go and then my drunk fat ass just like going down <laughs> As slow as you could, and I got busted for that oh, too. But um, you, you gotta love it. This comedian Steve Trevino. I mean, you you had a great time. Uh, obviously, when you're on the road, uh, you, like right off the bat, when you're a younger man, did you slow down a little bit when you got married and met your wife, or this all still while you know you were married and uh, just kind of letting loose when you're on the road? Well, uh, you know, two things. I mean, number one, imagine being in your twenties you know, your college years on the road, right? Right. In, a, dif in yeah. a different, in a different city on stage, the clubs give you all the free drinks you want. I mean, yep. it's not a good time to be on, you know what I mean? Like, it was, <laughs> I mean, it was wonderful, but I was in my twenties. I mean, I can remember I got on the road at 21 years old. Right. Yeah. Hmm. And that's you a know? huge accomplishment for a young comedian too. <clears throat> usually you got to get so much mic time and stage time to even get close to uh, being a touring comic. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I started at 18. So by 21, I had already been doing it right. know, quite a bit. And I was on the road full time in my early twenties. I mean, you're going to lose your mind. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and now, now the, the problem now is yes, you know, I did slow down when I, when I had my wife, but, one of the things I love about my wife is is I entertain her, so she loves the shenanigans. <laughs> but she's the kind of wife that's like, "Oh, Steve, you know what I mean?" Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like oh, there goes Steve again. You know, she she likes to be entertained. The only thing that has changed is, you know, instead now I go to casinos, I play craps, I have drinks. No more fighting. No more getting arrested. You know, yeah. and that's. And that's her role. She's like, look, be you, don't get arrested, and don't cheat on me. I'm like, okay, I can follow That's a good rule. Simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, yeah. But, but yeah, my wife is, I always say in a relationship, there's always the person that causes problems, and then there's the other person that likes to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> and your wife's right? the person that likes to watch the show. Oh, yeah. She likes to watch the show. I, I, I entertain her, and then she's over there like, I can't believe he said that, but secretly <laughs> she absolutely loves that. I said it, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, now, I'm surprised she doesn't uh, hit the road with you more. I know that you guys do a podcast <laughs> together as well. Uh, when did you start the podcast with your wife? Pandemic. Um, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to do a podcast. I could care less about a podcast. I also felt like everybody was doing the podcast route. and uh, You're not wrong. I, I just didn't want to do it. And then um, I got depressed during the pandemic. I felt like the world was falling on top of me and that I was going to lose my career and all the things that I had worked for. And my wife looked at me and she was like, this is not you. She's like, let's do something, you know? So we, we started going live every Wednesday on Facebook and oh my gosh, man. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of people were tuning in and we just continued it because I, I'm a, I'm a pleaser. I'm a people person. I'm an entertainer. I'm a, I'm a host. And I, I, I'm insecure and I would, it would break my heart to let people down. So people were like, Oh my God, y'all got to keep doing this. So even if it's one person that looks forward to our podcast, I feel like I don't want to stop doing it. Cause I'll let them down. Right. Um, but that, that's when it all started. And to be honest with you, I now enjoy it. I enjoy that one hour. I get to sit down and hang out with my wife and have a real conversation. Right. In a way, do you feel like it's making your relationship with your wife stronger? Because yeah, I mean, essentially you guys are acting co-hosts. So you're you're communicating in a way that normal husband and wife <clears throat> might not communicate at all. Right? Oh, dude, one thousand percent. I mean, I tell people like the fact that we have real conversations and we know people are watching helps. Yes. Right. Because you behave yourself and you listen. And, you, and, and like, I mean, there's moments where I'm like, oh, sorry, I interrupted you, babe. That never happens. That's <laughs> 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 like, yeah, marriage uh, counseling advice right there. If you have yeah. any trouble out there, start a podcast okay. with your wife uh, and make sure that, you know, you invite your family friends and family and friends to watch. So yeah, you're on your best just, behavior. Just argue in front of others and you'll be a different person. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah. uh, comedian Steve Trevino is going to be performing live on April 20th. That's 420 here in Tucson. Uh, you get your ticket information, score those tickets at tcc.com. Uh, it's going to be at the Linda Ronstadt Music Hall as part of this tour, uh, which is a long running uh, tour that Steve's doing. We're going to continue the conversation on the podcast broadcast. You can join us youtube.com slash be vegan, but don't forget to check out Steve Trevino live April 20th at the Linda Ronstadt Music Center. It's Rock One 2.1. Clear. All right. Um, so that was our FM side too. And then yeah, no worries. Yeah. So that's but, you know, for, for, for me as a Mexican American, you know, Linda Ronstadt's huge, man. I mean, right. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom, my mom played her Canciones de Mi Padre album every Sunday while we cleaned. Yes. You know, and I had no idea that Linda Ronstadt had this other huge career. I only knew yep. her as this mariachi singer. Like, I had yeah, no but idea. No idea. She's a huge pop star. She was a massive celebrity. Massive. Yeah. And, and the and the fact that they've never made a biopic on her is mind blowing to me. I felt like they are making one right now, right? <laughs> well, I well, mean, was, if they... there was a rumor that Selena Gomez was going to play her, which I think would be perfect. That'd be amazing. Have you seen younger pictures of uh, Linda Ronstadt uh, side by side with Selena Gomez? Oh yeah, they look and, and, identical, dude. And Linda Ronstadt's like, eh, I don't need a bra. I'm just gonna not wear a bra. And I'm like, yes, thank you, thank you Linda. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. In fact, actually, I you know I haven't been backstage in the green room area for the Ronstadt Music Center yet. Um, but I would imagine because there there are historic photos of Linda hanging backstage with. I know I've seen one where I think she was hanging backstage with like Led Zeppelin or some kind of iconic band like that here at the TCC in Tucson, right? And uh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure she wasn't wearing a bra. I just remember that picture being like, damn, Linda Ronstadt. She was smoking hot back in the day. Yeah, so she was. Well, and then what's crazy is she dated Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. and, and then the Eagles were her band. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. She dated Jim Carrey. Yeah. She dated Jim Carrey. So she was like a cougar when she <coughs> dated Jim Carrey, right? Yeah. He was a young, up and coming comedian. Wow. And he talks about it. And I'll tell you this, and, and this was before my wife. Yeah. No girl in Los Angeles, California, ever even looked at me unless I walked off the comedy store stage. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, was, that, the, was, that was your game. Yep. If I walked off the stage, oh, my God, you are hilarious. Who's your agent? You know? And then, yeah. 
And then I would I would lie. I'm like, oh yeah, I got them all. I got all the agents. They're all. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're all my agents. All of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many agents. So little yeah. time. You know. Managers, agents. I got them all. I got them all. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you started so young as a teenager, right? And going in your college years, your your whole game was just basically, uh, what, chuckle sluts then? You don't want to just, was pretty, that I your mean, dating pretty, experience? Oh, pretty much. I, I, <laughs> I, would, I would go on stage and then the headliner would go up after me and then I would go hang out by the women's restroom. <laughs> like, hey you recognize me i was the guy that was just that was just up there eh? yeah. <laughs> oh my god you're so funny oh wow thank you you want to have a shot with me you know and then it was it was that was it you know but, <laughs> so where where did you meet your wife then was your wife uh, from the same area that you're from yeah we grew up we grew up together i mean she uh she went out and we talked about it on, on the simple man netflix special but you know, she was pursuing acting in New York City and, and I was trying to be a comedian in L.A. And her dad was like, hey, my daughter's going to be in L.A. Take care of her. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I got you. I got you. I will take care of her. Personally, I will take care of her. Famous last um, words, right? Yeah. But, but I didn't know that I would fall in love with her. I didn't know. You know, I was like, oh, man, I know she's a pretty girl. You know, and I'm like, I'm going to invite her out. We're going to hang out. I'm going to do this, my thing. Yeah. And then I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, my God, you know, this girl, I'll never be with a girl like this ever again. Right. You know, she was beautiful and smart and classy and well put together and had a dad. Yeah. And I was like, man, I, you know, I can't mess this up. And. It, it was over for me. I, you know, the, the minute that from that night on, it was me and her. I mean, and I also, you know, one of the um, biggest advices I got, you know, I remember, you know, I knew, I knew Vince Vaughn pretty well and Vince had just gotten um, old school and then wedding crashers. And I remember Early Vince, 2000s blowing up. Yeah, yeah. And I remember Vince telling me, he goes, Hey man, work as hard on your career as you do on your relationships. Oh. He, goes, he goes, cause one day you're going to make it and have nobody to share it with. Right. <clears throat> and, and shortly after that, I met my wife Renee and, and I remember that advice. I'm an advice kind of guy, man. I, I listen to people. I, I learn from others. I'm, you know, I'm dyslexic. So, you know, I remember everything. And, and I just, that, that was one thing that kind of hit me hard. And I was like, man, I, I don't want to wake up, be super successful and, not have anybody to share it with. And that girl came into my life and not to sound cheesy, but I believe in God. I believe in, I believe that things happen for a reason. And God was like, here she is. And I was like, all right, I can't screw this up. You know? Right. And that's a beautiful story. And uh, you know, with that, you were set up for, with her, by her father. How did you know her father? Well, we all grew up together, you know? I okay. Mean, yeah. You, you got to remember, I grew up in Gregory Portland, Texas. And it was two towns put together to make a whopping 10,000 population. Okay. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so we knew you know everybody. everybody. Yeah. My dad knew his dad, like everybody knew everybody. I came home because uh, we were doing a show in Corpus Christi. I'm literally cutting my grandma's yard when he came over. Nice. He was, he was like, Hey, I know you live in LA. My daughter's going to be there for the summer. Here's her number. And I was like, dude, I got this. You know? <laughs> and I and I knew she was hot, you know, because yeah. we grew up with her. You know, yeah. she, has, she has a nice pooper, and that's what I like. So yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this girl's got a nice turd cutter. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a good thing your daughter wasn't flat ass, sir. I would just yeah. say that, that's I, how you know right off the bat. To this day, I tell her all the time, I'm like, you're a homeowner because of that turd cutter right there. That is, <laughs> that is, why, that is why you're a homeowner. <laughs> your ass paid for this house legitimately. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, Steve, so you said you're an advice guy. What kind of advice can you give to, you know, um, comedians that are up and coming? Because you've obviously filmed multiple specials. You're on tour. Like, your career's taken off. You're at that point where you're like, this is what I imagine. You, what was your personal key to success? How did you get to that level? Uh, man, you know, I, I, the, a couple of mistakes I made is that I never played the game. 
Uh, that's one of the biggest mistakes I made. But I also, you know, like Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. And I'm glad mm-hmm. that I did it. I'm glad I did it my way. Um, but I think I got good at, at being a comedian because I never turned down a gig. And I, I, I really approached it from a blue collar point of view of I'm going to outwork everybody. Yep. When, when everybody's doing three sets a week, I'm going to do 10. When, when everybody is, you know, not wanting to host, I'm going to host because I get to go on stage five times that night instead of one. You know, so I, I really took a, a – <clears throat> and nowadays, it, these comics, they want to do things backwards, right? They, they want to have a huge social media following without becoming good at their craft. And yeah. I, I didn't know that I was becoming good at my craft by the stage time. And, I mean, I was, I was doing sometimes 15 sets a week. I mean, I was like, oh, yeah. you know, every bar, restaurant, I was running all over L.A., doing three sets a night sometimes, sometimes four, you know, and I was taking a a blue collar approach to it. And that's what I would tell these young guys. Number one, you can do it on your own. You don't need anybody. Number two, outwork everybody and get good at your craft. And uh, that's the biggest thing I see with these young comics is they want to be famous today. Right. Right. So they go, well, I'll go on kill Tony. Hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll have a great set. It'll go viral. Joe Rogan invites me on his podcast. And <laughs> right. <that's, laughs> right, we're going to get back on the air on that. Right. right. Rock Club 2.1 KF May. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. We're on with comedian Steve Trevino, who's performing at the Linda Ronsap Music Hall here in Tucson on April 20th. And he was giving Valdez advice on how, you know, what he would give uh, to any aspiring comedian out there. And essentially, it's outwork the room and continue to work and, and not go back. You have this modern day uh, generation uh, approach of trying to, you know, blow up and be a, a celebrity on social media, uh, but not necessarily be a master of their craft, like you were referring to. Yeah, right? and, and yeah, and, and every, like I said, we want it now. And and I'm so tired when these young comics they'll hit me up on Instagram and go, "Hey, I'm I'm a comedian in Tucson. I'd love to open for you." And I'm like, "Dude, we've never met." Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> how about how about step one, come hang out. How about step one. Go to the go to the front and tell tell them, hey, I'm a stand uh, aspiring stand up comedian. Can I'd love to meet Steve. Ninety nine percent, I will tell my road manager. Oh my God, bring that guy back. Right, right. Like he's taking initiative to meet me, and then just hang, just hang, be cool, because I'm coming back. You know, yeah. and now now we know each other. But this idea of like, can I have a spot? And then I go, well, come hang. And then I hear. Well, am I going on stage? And I'm like, dude, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> you're done. yeah. That's so selfish, yeah. too. Now, did you block Valdez after he asked you that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you gotta stop signing DMs, dude. That's not the way to go. Alex Ramundo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, be careful because you just went backwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm now, kidding. Who- I love Alex. I love Alex. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but, but, dude, if you want to come and do five minutes, come on, man. Um, no, no, don't give him that opportunity yet. <laughs> All right, so Steve, <laughs> you know, is part of your work ethic? Do you do you attribute that to growing up in the small Texas town? You know, of like you know, a like hardworking family, and you just took that approach to the craft. Dude, my dad was was my dad is is tough love, the definition of tough love. My dad was the hardworking, hard nose, get your ass to. I mean, I've had a job since I was twelve. You know, yeah. my dad, my dad put me on a roof roofing houses like working is what I do it's what I like to do I mean I don't sleep I don't I mean from the minute I wake up I'm either working in my at my property doing a project cutting the yard doing something or we own a shirt company uh we podcast I mean I'm I'm what you call a workaholic right I, lo- I love it and I enjoy it but yes that was instilled by my dad you know daily Bro, my dad was never the you can sleep in guy in his house. Like it didn't matter what day it was, my ass was up at six o'clock in the morning. Right, every day. Yeah. You know, Friday I knew in high school if I was gonna go get annihilated, I'm like, I better be ready. <laughs> yeah. I, I better I'm gonna he's gonna wake me up at six and I gotta pretend like I'm cool. 
Like, <laughs> I'd wake up and he's like, you're up? And I'm like, yeah, I'm up. <laughs> I'm dead. What are we doing today? <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it also teaches you like, dude, is it that bad? Show up to work. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, be, be a man. Handle it. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, my upbringing was was very hard nosed. And I remember my dad, you know, I'd be out there working and my dad would tell me, you're going to be a better man. You're going to have more. You know, you, your, your friends might be looking at you going, oh, look at poor Steve on that roof working. But one day you're going to have a better life than them because you're going to work harder. And, and I do, I do have a wonderful life and a great life. And I live in this 12 acre resort in Texas. And I, I, man, I step back and I just go, if it wasn't for my dad teaching me to bust my ass, I don't know if I'd be here. Right. Yeah. You know? And it was do all land, it. Do you landscape your own property? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, nice. I landscape and cut my own property. and I win yard of the year and I, I, I talk crap to all my neighbors because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you guys win yard of the month and you're bragging, but you didn't set foot in your yard. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, like you did this. Yeah, like I right. you actually take yeah. that that time. Uh, and it, so I, I take it you have one of those riding lawnmowers as well, right? I have a zero turn. Um, my kid is eight years old. He did now he does the zero turn and I weed eat. So I put his little ass to work too. You know, <laughs> I, six a.m. Six a.m. dude, and, and I don't want him to be the rich kid. I don't want yeah. him to be the I don't want him to be that kid, you know. So, you know, he has the chicken coop, he's in charge of taking care of it, cleaning it. He has a little business, he sells his eggs. Yeah. You know, I I, I, I tax him. <laughs> I, do. Way to do it. I do. Uh we got Bella on the stream asking you who your favorite comedian uh is. So if you were to say you have a favorite or somebody that you uh currently like working with or someone that you aspire to be, uh who's that? Oh man, you know, I don't watch any stand up anymore, which is really sad because I was such an avid, huge fan of stand up. Right, but I, I, I just don't watch it because I don't want to be influenced. I don't want, I don't subconsciously, want yeah, subconsciously to be influenced. You know, whether it's mannerisms or or a joke or so. I don't watch any stand up, not even my own. I don't even watch my specials. But yeah. growing up, growing up, Eddie Murphy to me was the guy. I mean, yeah, I could recite recite Eddie Murphy raw. I, 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 you know, that dude is to me the greatest of all time. People say prior, I say Eddie Murphy. Right. <clears throat> you know, because prior prior was great and he kind of invented modern stand up. But Eddie's ability to do impersonations and bits and act outs and thought pro I mean, he he just all around to me one of the most talented comedians on earth. And then modern guys, you know, I've I've just always been fond of Bill uh Burr. Yeah, because you know, Bill. Bill at times defended me when I needed it. Um, Bill is just a a regular kind of blue collar Boston guy. You know, I admire guys like Jeff Foxworthy, Ray Romano, guys that have this career and have stayed married. Yeah, you know, because, because it's difficult, right? It's tempting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I want to. I want to stay married. So I, I I look at these guys that have actually done it. And I go, man, I, if I can be like that, I'm, I'm good, you know? And, and that's that was the big realization for me. I remember standing at the comedy store, hating my life, living in L.A. And I said, wait a minute. Jim Gaffigan's not here, and he has a great career. Ron, right. Ron White's not here. Jeff Foxworthy's not here. Ray Romano's not here. You know, Brian Regan's not here. And they all have amazing careers. And that was when I was like, I don't have to be here. And I yeah. left. You know, I left the Texas to get away from the scene and then it followed me. I'm like, oh. I'm like, I know now it's back in Austin. Yeah. It's... yeah. Well, that can we call that Texas? I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Uh, we're going to wrap things up with Steve Trevino on the podcast broadcast. You can join us YouTube.com slash beef vegan or you just see him live because he is going to be performing at the Linda Ronstadt Music Center on April 19th. You can get your ticket information at TCC.com. Uh, Steve Trevino, everybody. Steve, thank you so much.
Thanks for having me, dudes. And I mean it. If you want to do five minutes, come hang. Uh, yes, <laughs> I will. I definitely. Message. Yeah, he will. He will for sure. And you got a good solid five. I do. All right, nice. I, do. Yeah, I like the confidence. I will, I'll I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I told Alex, I got 30. He's like, all I need is 15. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. He immediately cut that. No, 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 no. You're not doing 30. But, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, uh, you watched, and she, I mean, you're a Texas native, right? So seeing uh, Austin explode into a comedy mecca, it already had a lot of different styles. Already, It was already the blueberry and the tomato soup. But um, now it's, you know, it's, it, it just is a huge thing. It's essentially they took the comedy store. They, they <laughs> put it right there in the middle of, uh, you know, Texas in a way. Uh, seeing this explode, what are your thoughts on that? And and are you enjoying, uh, you know, what the comedy scenes turning into in Texas? I, I, I avoid it at all costs. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I, I do not go into that scene. I, I prefer not to. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a very, um, can be a very toxic situation and and i think that my comedy i've learned that i'm not those guys and, and nothing against right. those guys and those, right, guys right. Are, those guys are funny and those guys are great and they have their own thing I, I, i'm not those guys i'm i am happily married living in a very very normal neighborhood and that's where my stand-up comes from and and i have to live the life that i talk about on stage and hanging out at that at the comedy scene and, and I'm not going to name any names because I absolutely love every comedian and I know how right. hard it is to make it. But I remember in my 30s, when I was in my early 30s, mid 30s, I'm at the comedy store and I'm looking at these guys in their mid 40s to 50s hanging out at the comedy store every night until four o'clock in the morning. And I would think to myself, don't you have a wife? Don't right. you have kids? And I'm like, right. I don't want to I don't want to be that guy. You know, and, and a lot of these guys. Did and my thing is, if you have to be there to be seen and to make it, I understand. But all these guys in their forties and fifties had already made it. And right. I, so I what's just thought, the point? Yeah, I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't want to be forty-five years old, standing out at the mothership, hoping to be seen. Or, well, I mean, what does it accomplish? Right. You know, yeah. stage stage time I get every weekend. Right. So yeah. I don't need the stage time. And my off time, I don't want to be in a parking lot hanging out with comedians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I, you know, it does seem like yeah, you, you got to figure it out, you know, and you're going strong. So uh, I'm very happy to see everything that's been going on with your career and your life. And I appreciate you taking the time out to hang and talk with us. Excited that you're coming through Tucson, constantly touring here. And, you know, congratulations on the latest Netflix special. And I mean, everything else to come. I'm sure you're just going to keep on grinding away and doing what you're doing. And I love uh, Steve's uh, comedy style, essentially telling life stories, right? That's so, it. you know, yeah, just going out there and experiencing life and stuff. So, I mean, well, have you ever. That's my other that? advice to young comics. Like, do you. Don't right. worry. Don't worry about the comedians in the back of the room. If they think you're funny or if they think what you're doing is genius. Are the people laughing? Are they having a good time? Those are the people that buy tickets, not right. comedians, not comedians. No. <laughs> you know, and, and I think that happens a lot in that comedy club scene where comics are just trying to impress other comics mm -hmm. instead of just being themselves and making the audience enjoy our craft. Right. Yeah. And by right. the way, because I know we got to go, Tucson is a very special place. For me, and I'll tell you why. You have to drive to Tucson from Texas to get to LA. Yeah, true. When I decided to move to Los Angeles, I had no money and I knew I had enough money to get to LA. Well, my water pump goes out in Tucson and I have to roll into an auto zone. And I think I was like 24. I'm trying to change this water pump out by myself. And this Tucson guy rolls up in his pickup truck and for 45 minutes puts my water pump back in my truck for me. Really? No. And nice as, and I, I don't even know his name, but I ended up like making it to LA because of this dude was nice enough to spend his time to help me. 
So Tucson for me is just one of those places that in the name comes up. I think about that moment, right? Yeah. I, I drive through it. I think about that moment. That's just one of those moments that's ingrained in my brain and part of my career and my journey is Tucson. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, and you don't recall his name at all, huh? So are you going to try to uh, mention the story while you perform live? Have you, because I know that you've been here before. Do you bring it up and see if he's in the crowd? I, I, yeah, I've, I've brought it up, but you know what? I, I think about it because that was like now 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. So you know, the, the guy's probably 70. Yeah. He was an older guy. Nice. He was an older dude, you know, but, you know, cowboy, beat up cowboy hat, you know, beat up pickup truck, you know, came over to me, was like, oh, I, he probably looked at me like, oh, look at this kid. Oh, lady so on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, look at this little baby trying to change a water pump. <laughs> I'll show you how easy this is. Was it summertime too? Was it hot? Do you recall? It was hot. Yeah, okay. It was, it was, it was hot. And my I had a 1984 and a half Nissan yellow <laughs> pickup truck. Dude, that's what I was rolling in, baby. And and I'm over there struggling. I have no tools. All they gave you was like the little basket that they have at AutoZone. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? It has like a screwdriver and a freaking Allen wrench, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm in like, there trying to figure it out. And here comes this dude. Like, I got you and opened up the back <laughs> of his truck. And and I go, how much? And he was like, just get out. Go, man. Just <laughs> Please leave. Yeah. And, <laughs> That's but, amazing. And, and of course, I'm telling him I'm a comedian and I'm moving to LA. I'm going to make it. <laughs> going to make it. You can't even change the water pump. You're dead in the water, <laughs> son. <laughs> you little titty baby, get out of here. <laughs> you know i think a lot of part of to, to make it for a lot of comedians in general is to just uh, believe in yourself so much where you take that leap and moving to la is taking that leap right i mean we wouldn't yeah. even have this conversation if you didn't just go all in on yourself and take the chance because you went out there with nothing there's a good chance that city could have ate you up swallowed you up whole right and spit you out yeah there, there was no going home for me yeah i mean i i lived in my truck for the first three months in a Walmart parking lot, you know, and I, there was no going home. It was what I was going to do, but all of all comedians are arrogant people and, and people don't realize that that is a trait that they have to have. And then the problem with it is with that arrogance, that's why it takes so long to make it because you believe in yourself so much that when guys like me give you advice, you go, well, I already know what I'm doing. Right. Because yeah. in order to think I belong on stage, I belong there and mm -hmm. 300 people absolutely have to have and hear what I have to say. You're a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're insane. yeah. He says to a radio station. <laughs> you know, well, I'm, I relate to that. I relate to the, that. Too. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. confidence that you have, the, the things I have to say need to be heard. Yeah. Like that's crazy talk. Yeah. <laughs> like, you need that certain yeah, that, that it's a delusional confidence, but that confidence is key. I uh, no matter how much it's based in delusion. Cuz I've seen I look there's a very 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 famous comedian right now and like I said, I don't ever crap on comedians because right. it's 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 low class, it's ghetto, I don't do it. Right. Um but there's a very very famous comedian when I first moved to LA, he would walk on stage and he would eat it harder than I've ever seen anybody eat it in my life. And right. I remember thinking, I would quit. <laughs> like, every time you go on stage, dude, it is a disaster. Right. But one day, a couple years later, that same guy walked on stage and was the funniest dude in the room. And it was just mind-blowing to me because I was like, I would have quit the second time I ate it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've never had a bad set. I've never eaten it on stage. You always get some laughs, you know, some whether laughs. or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but I'm talking about crickets. People, people, crickets, uncomfortable feeling. Like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. I feel bad for you. But <laughs> now this guy sells out arenas. And he's one of the funniest dudes out there. 
and it was it was literally one day to the next. So I never tell comedians not to do it. Right. Like no matter how bad they are, I'm like, hey man, like just keep doing it, dude. You figure you it know? out. Yeah. Cause this guy did, and now he makes fifteen million dollars a year touring. Right, right. Yeah. So give it up for Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> like after all, some comedian name. You won't, you won't say who it is, huh? I will I not say who it is. Fun. I will not That's say fun. who it is. Well, still, it's very good. Uh, well, Steve, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And I know you got to do your TV performance and stuff. So I'm not going to keep you any longer, but uh, look forward to your show on April 20th when you come out here. Uh, and I'm just stoked for you, dude. So thanks again for hanging out with us on the show. We appreciate yeah, it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be on. And, I, and that's one of the reasons I will let you on stage because you're sharing your airtime with me. You didn't have to do that. Yeah. So I will share my stage with you, my friend, and we'll see how funny you are. I'm oh, on this. It's oh, all right. yeah. I will yeah. represent well. Right. Thanks, man. <laughs> I know you probably don't allow cell phones in the building, but uh, can I sneak mine in? Because I want to. Oh, get please do. Please <laughs> do. <laughs> all right, Steve. We'll I talk did. to you later, brother. Thank you later, so much. Man. Thanks, guys. Right. Thanks, bro. Take it easy. Steve Trevino, everyone. So, yeah, you're going to message him. Uh, and then there you go. You got five minutes. There we go. Yeah, hey. Good. Hey, don't screw up. It's, yeah, don't you screw up. There's it's, pressure. It's like every lady a date. You get five minutes and you're going to laugh a lot. Rock on 2 by one KFMA. Welcome back to BFG Presents. Valdez just scored himself five minutes of opening stage time uh, for Steve Trevino when he's performing on uh, April 20th, which is 420. So don't get stoned when you're on stage there, Valdez. Or no, before. No, 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 do it on stage. Do it After? beforehand. Oh, before. Before. First off, you know, no smoking weed on stage on in the Linda Ronstadt music. Call very until, disrespectful until you made it until you <laughs> i'm a pudgy it. guy i'm a i'm an edibles kind of dude <laughs> right 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 right. yeah i i get it i get it uh so why yeah. is valdez eating so much chocolate before the show <laughs> he <laughs> no, really <laughs> likes those brownies no <laughs> eating food while you're on stage too you know this will be a big actually you i mean you've done opening sets for you know uh like alex uh raimundo uh who you know that was in front of a couple hundred people this uh linda ron it's at music center have you been there you know how many not people? Lately. Uh, not lately. You've been there once. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know how many people that cap is? No. About eighteen hundred. Okay. Yeah. So because uh, the Alex show was almost twelve hundred, and then the he also got me for Phoenix Live, so that was another show that had a lot of. That was seats, like five so. six hundred. So this uh, this uh you know setting oh, is, is about huge. four times. Oh yeah, this yeah, is yeah. huge, man. All right. And I love me some Linda Ronstadt. So to be in a building that's named after her. I'm happy. Magic. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I, as a Tucson resident, you could go inside the building that's named after her all the time. You know, yeah, that's but you a, can't <laughs> perform. Like nobody's gonna be there. You just stand on stage talking to yourself. Okay. Okay. And so you've been working on your five, dude. I already got it. <laughs> okay. It was from way back when, or uh, did you been doing stage time recently? I do, but like every time you see me, I have different material. So you're rarely gonna see me do the same material. Right. Uh, well, a lot of successful comedians do the same material uh, that works, you know, so they, I'll they do the that. joke that <laughs> that's works, why but... he changes every time. <laughs> I'm better at comedy than football. I promise, coach. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got Manny hanging out with us, too. Uh, like, uh, it looks like I got a long stop set. So we got your uh, beef tip coming up after these words. Uh, but we'll keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. YouTube.com slash beef vegan. Clear. And then we want to do a little show and tell with your lightsaber. Now is the time to bust it <laughs> now, out. Now, I mean, now do I really want to? Yeah. Uh, good job, everybody, uh, on the interview as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Steve, super cool, right? Yeah. Um, so he's not as cool as a lightsaber, but I mean, yeah. He's cool. And Dave, if Dave, if you're still watching, that's why I was like, I don't have the extra mic, but I'm like, I I I, and I forgot that we had Steve on, and I knew this is gonna be at least 40, 30 minutes. I brought Manny in just to watch the stream live on the air. Yeah. <laughs> so, season ticket holder. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, VIP so. section. I look at Todd's massive lightsaber. Huge. It intimidates people. Yeah. <laughs> He's is, been playing with this thing uh, all day long. So let's give a, a, a breakdown on the price on this. How much did this cost? So this this was made at Disney World. Um, you had to have a um. They made a reservation. it there. No, I. I mean, I made it there in, in Disney World. I put the whole thing together. Oh, you customized they, it. They present it to you. So, uh, the the lightsaber itself is just shy of three hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, and that's just for 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 this what you see here, the lightsaber with one kyber crystal with one color. 
Um, and one, yeah, one there's a kyber too. crystal in that, whatever yeah. that is, the, it's inside it. There's a kyber crystal inside this, but yeah, so they initially, when you sign up, um, they say they give you a little basically a menu, okay, and say pick one of these four, and it's four different styles of like, do you want the light side, do you want dark side, do you want some outlanders, do you want you know, uh, guardians, things like that. Uh -huh. Um, and then they come in, and there's a whole uh, just Disney magic is the only really way to put this. There's an actor in there that helps you through the entirety of the process. They give you a pin to signify what it is. And the pin looks like that, whatever your, your, your little nub in there is. <laughs> That's impressive. That's an impressive nub. Uh -huh. I like, you know, this thing is just like an overpriced sex toy for sure. But it's, you know, for both men and women, there's the crystal. Inside has a kyber what, crystal. What is it, it called? comes out. It's a kyber crystal. Kyber crystal. It changes the colors. So that crystal is a purple one. Purple crystal. So you're gonna have a purple lightsaber. So, show a different color. This is actually impressive. Remember like, that if you're a meth dealer, just say I'm just dealing kyber crystals. <laughs> yeah, these are just kyber crystals for sure. I'm a Jedi. It's a green. <laughs> so there's no a green. Longer. So he's gonna turn into Luke Skywalker with this thing. This is impressive, actually. So when you switch the kyber crystal, crystal, uh, when you get it in there properly, get apparently. in there, right? Get in your home. Uh, it changes the color of the lightsaber. So uh, it even lights up. Show, show that real quick. Oh, wait, yeah, show how that lit up right there. Look at that, dude. That's fancy. And that's inside. That's like, I'm about to bury it. You'll never see it again. <laughs> uh, no ditty. I mean, everything that you're saying, bro, is super homoerotic when it comes to this thing. Oh, Andrew I said, mean, oh, if that was homoerotic, that's on you. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things when you talk about uh, inside things. <laughs> there's green. You can barely tell look at any difference on. in the video because it's just light. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, but it, is, it is nice and green. <laughs> it the looks super the cool. pure it joy of this man. He's, it's unmatched. Makes proper lightsaber sounds and everything. Yeah, I can just imagine. But based off how often, like all morning long, he was playing with this thing. Uh, you might have heard the sound effects in the background inadvertently on different talk breaks. So around the house. Uh, we have, have three. You... So yes, there's lightsaber battles. Okay, yeah, but uh, yeah, like how many hours a day do you feel like you have a lightsaber in your hand? Um, I mean, for the first week, there was a there's maybe up to an hour a day of at it. least an hour. I've, a day. I've gotten over it since then, and it just hangs out. And that's yeah. okay. For yeah, 300 yeah. bucks, you better like sleep with that thing. No, no, I mean, it's it's wall decoration. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like I said, for 300 very, bucks, you could, yeah, very impressive bit of work. They give you all kinds of options because this was from. Uh, I believe this is the hilt from Qui-Gon, uh, the handle from Obi-Wan, uh, the original, I got the purple, so the purple lightsaber being uh, Mace Windu. Um, I believe the hilt there is uh, Luke Skywalker, so it's an amalgamation of of many Jedi, and the, the whole process, I'll tell a quick story here. Um, when we did it, they go through, <laughs> and they uh, they talk about, you know, like, oh, you consider the Jedi, you consider the lessons, but when you get done with the uh, building this at the end, you will have a lightsaber and the guy lights it up. Now it's a group of like, I want to say about 15 people in the room that are actively building and the people two over from us, it's a father and son and the kid can't be older than five. And as soon as that guy holds that lightsaber up and goes in the end, you'll have a lightsaber that lights up and the room darkens and that kid goes, wow, a <laughs> lightsaber. Everybody melts. It was pure Disney magic. It was an actual genuine, honest to God moment of Disney magic. Uh, it was a fantastic and highly expensive experience. We're like, wow, that kid has an excuse for being a virgin. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love shit on that. I love, I love shit on things that people enjoy. I do. I do. That's, it's a passion of mine. <laughs> it, is, it is fantastic though i mean it's it's impressive i you know i haven't grabbed it or hold it held it once and now you're not gonna get to because you're a jerk <laughs> a jerk guy <laughs> jerk guy yeah well, that's a... <laughs> by the way i'm gonna do a throwback he said that he hadn't he doesn't listen to comedy you're giving me so much crap about not watching pro wrestling there's a there's a famous comedian who doesn't watch stand-up and I don't watch pro wrestling, but you're giving me crap because I, I work the indies. First off, okay, uh, there's a difference in uh, tax bracket for sure. <laughs> right Obviously. off the bat, All right? Okay, so uh, Steve is a successful uh, comedian on, uh, you know, has made it by every metric, right? 
and doesn't watch other comedians. So he doesn't subconsciously like bite from those comedians, especially since he did work on my dementia. This is obviously you know, <laughs> a little sensitive. That, yeah, a little sensitive. He, he's going to make sure that not to ever be accused of, uh, you know, plagiarism. Uh, now, if you were a successful professional wrestler and you said, I don't watch professional wrestlers anymore because I'm a master of my craft and I don't want to inadvertently steal people's moves. Then I'd, I'd say I'd make sense. But you come in wearing a fucking Dusty Rhodes shirt the day after his son finished the story and won the championship and tell me you didn't even know or care. That's just offensive. That's just <laughs> offensive. And, you know, like, so Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. Uh, we're back here. Going to wrap things up a little bit. And I'm, I'm bagging on Valdez. Um, <laughs> what else? <laughs> yeah, well, because he comes in like Manny, you've been watching the show for a long time. Did didn't Valdez always come across as like a wrestling fan? Yeah, I would have to say so. Yeah, dude, it wasn't he a, a like a, a a referee for independent wrestling shows? If if I didn't know so much, I would probably go to Valdez and ask him questions. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Does he look like a wrestling fan? So he's gonna come in acting like he's you know doesn't watch it or it's. Beneath him, uh, after oh, wrestling, too far, too far. Oh, I was just like wearing a Dusty road shirt, mind you. And he's like, Yes, it's old school, but it, it's also very relevant considering uh, his son was literally like the headliner for the entire weekend. Dusty Rhodes, the name was referenced, uh, you know, probably if there was fact check and over and under of 100, probably over 100 times. You come in wearing a Dusty Road shirt, and I ask you if you watch WrestleMania, <laughs> and you were offended that I asked. And I'm like, how, how is that a possibility? What? Right? I can't even spell WrestleMania. <laughs> you know, uh, like not being intelligent would only make it me believe you're more of a wrestling fan than you claim to be. Ouch. I know. I said it. Burn. Hey, I'm not All that. these wrestling marks are going to come after you now. They can come after me. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I am one of them. And, you know, I watch it. In fact, actually, I'm, I think I'm changing my name from Beef Vegan to Bisexual Undertaker before <laughs> they they copyright it because that was trending on uh, Twitter all day yesterday as well. And I, it just has a ring to it. Right? <laughs> and, and also double meaning when you hear the sound dong. <laughs> hey. Huh? Huh? Right. So we know the total, the total eclipse is happening right now, right? Or the uh, total so eclipse? It's going to start here in a couple hours. Total okay. Eclipse of the heart. Well, yeah. So, you know, obviously it's not going to get black out here, but I do have a beef tip I want to share with you before we wrap things up. And that is drive safe today. Today, especially. I mean, Tucson, we already know, is a maniac of a town where you always have to you watch out for crazy pedestrians. Please or other learn cars. how to take a left turn, Tucson. Please. Right, right. Okay. But a study found that there's a brief, significant 31% jump in accidents surrounding the big eclipse of 2017 that translates to an extra crash every 25 minutes and an additional fatality every 95 minutes, right? So most of those crashes probably weren't even caused by the eclipse itself, uh, but they do think because uh, it has something to do with extra traffic and other main factors like uh, people driving on familiar routes, uh, people speeding to get to the viewing area on time, drivers getting distracted by the eclipse itself, and pedestrians visiting the eclipse on the side of the road thinking that they can get a better view in the middle of the road. And, of course, Tucson, that would be a thing. <laughs> uh, so, And they say there's more drunk drivers because eclipse-related celebrations. Damn it, son. Are we getting <laughs> drunk today? <laughs> it's an eclipse. I mean, that sounds like a good enough excuse for me. <laughs> I want to get blackout for three minutes. Well, and CERN, the CERN's going to open up a big old sex portal for us. So, oh, yeah. party on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd sacrifice a goat. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, either way, at the end of the day, uh, make sure you drive a little bit more cautiously today because statistically speaking, uh, it's a little more dangerous on the roads because of all the distractions, dummies out there, and of course, people uh, finding an excuse to get drunk before noon. Uh, and I guess uh, that would be today. So with that said, that's all the time we have for the show today. But thank you, Manny, for coming in. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Valdez, uh, you know, thank you for coming in two hours late. Oh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> because I'm Valdez. Yeah, I can't wait to you do your, your five-minute set for Steve Trevino two hours after the show's over. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hopefully you can show up on time, learned a thing or two from uh, Steve and his work ethic. You could see the entire interview that we had with Steve, youtube.com slash beefegan. So you watch back in its entirety. Todd Marley, thank you as always. Uh, Robin Nash is up next. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Drive safe, ride safe, and as always, rock local. Later. When you wish no. upon a side of the easily intimidated by a large will lightsaber. come oh. and end to all you your just grief. have to whip out your Jedi and that's it. You know what happened today? Not even a